Hey guys, today I am joined by the beautiful and talented Rebecca Winter. So Rebecca, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Do you want to tell us like what you do? Okay, so um, my name is Rebecca Winter. I'm an Afrofusion artist and um, I'm a singer. So Winter, is that your actual name or...? I wouldn't like to know. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, Winter is not my actual surname. Um, I actually kind of created it when I was about 14. So I was songwriting at home. And then what happened was um, I was talking about emotions. So I was talking about like being sad, feeling like depressed and whatever. And um, I was comparing like the tears to the rain and like the storm to like hardships and things like that. And then I remember that like people always used to tell me, oh, like, I don't know how you're like so caring and like you empathize quite a lot of people and stuff, you don't judge people. And I was like, that's because of kind of what I've gone through. So then when I was putting that all in a song, I like was like, winter is like the season where you go through the most hardships, but that kind of makes you who you are. Yeah. So then I was just like, I'm gonna call myself Rebecca Winter. <laughs> it was so cheesy, like veggies. Um, but I was like, this actually makes sense for me. So since about 14, I was called Rebecca Winter. So how did you get into like singing and songwriting? Um, so I've ha actually been singing since I was really little. So when I was like, um, I don't know, for me like the age of six, I used to listen to Beyonce. My sister would come up with routines. I would come up with routines. Me and my cousin Regina, we used to just dance in the living room. Um, and she stayed with me. And from there, I was like, I love this. Like, I really enjoy performing. Um, and then over time, I found ways to get into it. So I was able to go to the studio, have my first studio session. Um, with someone called Fly and Fly. Um, and then, yeah, from then I was like, okay, I'm really good at this. Um, and yeah, I just continued. You mentioned that you grew up listening to like Beyonce. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What else did you grow up, um, grow up listening to? Um, so I was like heavily influenced at the time by like, well, my mum used to listen to like Shino Peters and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so like, you'd always hear like the typical. Um, Afro anthems as well, I would say, like, like Baja and everyone like that. Um, but then I also grew up listening to a lot of Bashmen. So, like, that's what was popping, like, yeah. before. It was, like, Afro Beats is, like, now currently popping. But before, all oh, my days, like, you go to a rave, you want to hear Babs Cartel, mm -hmm. you want to hear Mavado. So um, I listened to a lot of Bashmen, um, which is why, like, my music is, like, Afro fusion. So it's, like, a mixture of Afro dance hall um, and, yeah, Afro Beats as well. Would you say that the type of music you use? Um, listen to kind of influenced like your own sound and 100 music that you bring out. definitely like recently um i like i might hear a song and i'm like oh my gosh this song is fire but it's not my genre and then i'll go to the studio and i'm like i want to make a song like this so like i'm heavily influenced by what i listen to like if i like a sound i'm gonna try it and then but it always sounds like me if that makes sense always mm -hmm. still sounds like me but um yeah definitely what i listen to makes a difference yeah, yeah. So you opened up for David O and Monday Paul. Yeah. How did that come about? Oh, gosh. So I feel like, again, it comes down to, like, just kind of going for something and then doors, opportunities will open. So what happened with the David O situation was Daisy's cousin was helping Smade out um, with David O's tour. Yeah. So um, he was like, oh, like, she's an artist. Okay, you know, like, let's see what she can do. But at the same time, my cousin in Nigeria... Um, he was very close friends with David O's PA and David O's, like, group, I'll say, like, DMW, it's a group. So um, I spoke to him and he was coming to London with David O and I was like, okay, you know what, like, I really want to open for David O, like, how are we going to do this? So um, anyway, the guy had reached out to me anyway, but then it was, like, confirmed because they had said on their end, all right, the artist is happy with her doing that. So, um, yeah, kind of like, again, it was like inevitable that I was going to open for him. So that was amazing. Um, and then with One Day Cole, um, I think, so my previous manager, um, Cash, he had a friend that was hopping up with his tour as well. And, um, yeah, the guy was just happy with my music. He really liked my music. He was like, okay, cool, like, let's put it on the lineup. And I ended up, like, being the best performance, the best opening performance there. Um, I saw One Day Cole, like, he was like, yeah, your performance is amazing, da 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 um, and yeah, so like it was very much like get given the opportunity, yeah. you do it well, and then another opportunity kind of come, mm -hmm. comes as a result. Um, and there was other things that I used to do before that helped my profile. So like I sang uh, for Alameda and the concert in Hammersmith Apollo. Okay. Um, so, you know, that was like a huge concert. So like things like that kind of added to my credibility in a sense. Um, so yeah. 
So how is it like performing on stage? Do you ever feel like, oh, something, something might go wrong or... Um, I think what, yeah, like I just have to be super prepared, super prepared, super rehearsed because I get nervous. Like mm -hmm. people look at me like, she's so confident. Uh, be with me backstage. Like I literally have to be like quiet for a second because I'm such a perfectionist. So I literally make sure that everything is on point, but I'm super nervous for I go on. Um, but then, yeah, I guess once I touch the stage or like have the mic in my hands, I'm like, okay, cool. Like. Yeah. I just switch, like I'm a different person when I'm performing. Um, so yeah, I just kind of just kind of have faith in the fact that I've practiced. <laughs> um, but if I don't practice, then that's it. Yeah. It's a myth, like my nerves will get the better of me. And yeah, it'll be a mess. <laughs> so yeah. Your, your next EP, is your, is your first EP? Yeah, my first ever Where? EP. Where, yeah. yeah. Um, what can we expect from that? Oh, sis. Um, so like, it's going to be... It's gonna give everyone an insight into my music, into my sound. I feel like people have heard a lot of music from me, but they don't really know what type of, they still don't know what type of artist I am because I have so much different types of music. But the EP literally touches on every single genre that I'm involved with. So like um, dance hall side of me, the Afrobeat side of me, the like Bashman side of me, the like UK, Afro swing type side of me. So like it literally touches on all of that and it kind of still gives like a Rebecca Wins twist. Um, I've worked with two artists that I've like loved, like kind of, I've kind of, how do I say, I've admired for a while. Um, so that's Doctor, he's from Jamaica. He's like a great artist. He's got songs that were like Spice. Like he's quite big. Um, and Jimmy Abdul's, who is a very, very amazing um, Nigerian artist. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, these are artists, both artists that I like look up to. Um, so yeah, the EP is beautiful. I had the opportunity to work with um, Soko, so Brian Soko. So Brian Soko is a producer in LA. So when I went to LA, I was, I was able to work with him. He produced um, Lil Wayne's al last album. He produced um, Drunk in Love by Beyonce and Jay-Z. He produced, like, he's got four Grammys. So, like, he's up. <laughs> and he wanted to work with me because he liked my sound and he mm -hmm. felt like I was going to do well in yeah. terms of music. So that was, like, a sick opportunity. You should do that, Yeah, I got me doing okay, <laughs> right? Um, and he didn't charge me for anything. He did it for free. And this guy charged, like, a thousand dollars an hour. So um, that was amazing. Um, I've had, like, recent... Contact with Wyclef. So Wyclef is my new mentor. Mm -hmm. So um, Wyclef, for like people that don't know, he was in the Fugees, worked with Lauren Hill. He um, is he closed the VMAs. He's like works with everyone. Beyonce mm -hmm. changed Destiny's Child life. Um, with no 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 no. Um, but yeah, he 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 gravitates to me. He spoke to me recently, and um, since then he's literally been like on my WhatsApp every day. Like, how's it going? How's life going? What can we? You know, what can we do? What's the next steps? So he's been working with me. Um, been working with, oh, uh, like God has just been blessing me like recently. Like, there's so many connects that I've got. Um, Jamal Edwards from SVTV like supporting me now. Um, yeah, like the list is so endless. Like on a serious note, um, you know, when I had that love from Lily, Lily Allen on Twitter, since then she's been supporting me as well. So like, I feel like doors are really opening up for me. Um, left, right, and center. I got to work with Guilty Beats recently. Guilty Beats produced three songs on Beyonce's new album, The Lion King album. He produced already. He produced um, Browns and Girls. Like. He's top, and for him to say, let's work as well. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like I'm working with all the people that I wouldn't even dream of working with. Um, and like the manager for Parkwood Entertainment just followed me, Parkwood Entertainment's Beyonce's label. So like, things are working, like, do you know what I mean? Like I, literally the blessings are endless and mm -hmm. I, I'm just so grateful because I feel like I really do work hard for it. Um, and people are really gonna see what Rebecca Winter's about. So that's kind of brings me back to, the EP, why we put it out. It was someone called Abby um, who s suggested that we should do the EP, did the EP, and it's a complete success. Like, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. Not just because my work. It's, yeah, it's got hits on it. You've achieved, like, a lot of stuff as well. Thank and you. And you, you also won female, Best Female Artist. Yeah, Best Female Artist. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the... Legacy Awards. Legacy Awards. Um, yeah. So what else are you hoping to achieve? Okay, so... 
I said I want to be, so I actually tweeted it the other day because there was this thing that said, oh, like prophesy into your life or something or like speak what, whatever into your life. And then um, I was like, I want to be nominated for a second award, which I recently have, which was sick. Um, I want to, my name needs to be known like globally. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it definitely is because the other day someone was disputing um, dark skinned female artists in the industry and saying that there's not enough and that they don't get enough chances to go on like things like colours. Yeah. And out of nowhere, a girl wrote my name. She said, oh, but people like Nao, Ray Black and Rebecca Winter exist. Like for me to be on the list of Nao and Ray Black, I was just like, uh, what? Like, you know, exist. And I went onto this girl's Twitter. She does not follow me at all. Like it was my friend from Miami that told me mm -hmm. that, yo, your name's been dropped in this this thing because colours is, is a it's a global thing do you yeah. know what I mean it's not just you know it's not just in one area so for him to be like yo they mentioned your name and he's in Miami I was just like okay sick we're getting somewhere do you know what I mean um, but yeah I feel like I just want to be like a, a global influencer I want people to kind of look at my journey and be like you know what she didn't have like mad connects in the industry when she started off. She didn't have like a musical father or musical mother like that was like, you know, you you know, let me put you in the studio. I worked my way up with this. Like my mom started off being a, when she came, first came to the country, she was a cleaner, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I have come up now. So showing people that, you know what, it don't matter where you come from type of vibe, you can be where you need to be and do really well at it. So I just hope people look at my journey and are inspired. Um, yeah, because I, like, I'd never think that I'd come into contact with some of these people that I'm in contact with, but hey. So for like someone watching who um, may be in a position where, you know, they want to pursue music yeah. and they don't know what to do or like the next step, what advice would you give them? Um, I will say the first uh, bit of advice is research. So you need to like, no, I, I won't say you need to be like anybody in the industry, but have an idea of who inspires you within the industry. So have like, I don't want to say an idol either, because like you guys can get too obsessive with that, but just have someone that you look up to in a sense. And then you'll kind of know, okay, they've met this level of success. I want to do the same or I want to do better. So first have like someone you look up to that you would like to um, be like. And then after that, you kind of need to just have a look at, I, am I really passionate about this? Like, how deep is it for me? Like, if someone said, do you want £10,000 or do you want to become my singer? Like, what one are you picking? Like, you need, to, you need to have that passion. Then you need to think about your networking. So, like, you need to find a way to network. Everybody knows someone. Mm -hmm. So um, you just need to constantly speak to people, get more advice. YouTube is your best friend. Like, go on YouTube, listen to interviews, um, go on social media, Twitter, Instagram, find people that are in the music industry, ask them for advice, ask them how they got that studio or that, that record or how they, I don't know, shot that music video. You need to be intrigued. And then I'll also say, like, kind of they need constantly to talk to their friends as well. Like, your friends are who are going to help you, especially when you're younger, like, your friends are really going to support you when you're going through your battles, your musical battles. So that will also separate your friends quickly. Like you will see who's really happy for you and who's just like just hating or just trying to hold you back because they won't want to help you. But as soon as you, you locate those friends that are really down for you, um, just constantly talk to them. You never know who has a bright idea that's going to help you um, kind of kickstart your music career. So yeah, I say getting into it is not, it's not easy, but... You can even just do covers, like whatever makes you feel comfortable. Not everyone's the most amazing songwriter. Um, and then from there, I believe that the universe will just open doors for you. So, yeah. <laughs>